Hey everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for SimonSaysStamp.com and I have something a little bit different in the mixed media field. I am making cards out of a sheet of paper because I thought it'd be kind of fun to give away my mixed media projects and also just bring in card making with a little bit more texture and some fun stuff. So I'm starting off with a sheet of Canson watercolor paper and I've cut it in quarters and I've taped it down to my glass media mat. That way my pieces won't bowl and buckle in the middle. So I'm going to start off by doing some ink blending and I'm using pumice stone, evergreen bow, and brushed corduroy and I'm not cleaning my blending tool in between. I'm just going to just start adding some colors. And since I have my paper all taped down, I did want to add some water to this to get some droplets. So I thought, why not use a piece of acetate? So you'll see me just add a little bit of water to the acetate and tap it on to the pieces. This is this goes really fast to have all four done at once. So I'm going to be making four cards in total by the time I'm done. Then I figured out that I can also tap on some color onto the acetate, spritz it with water, and then tap it onto my paper. At this point, I didn't dry it in between the colors, so they do kind of mix, and I pick up the other colors as I'm transferring the acetate back and forth. So I end up with some really nice mixtures of color. Once I was finished with my color, I ended up letting it dry, and now I'm using the Tim Holtz Crackle Paste. And this is an opaque white, and I'm just randomly putting it on with a spatula. I, I really do like having everything taped down because I can just go right over that tape and I don't have to worry about missing my borders or really getting too much on the edges. So once I'm done applying all the paste, I'm going to let it dry and do its crackly fun goodness. So it's fully dry now, and I have pulled out two of the Distress Crayons. These are Walnut Stain and also Gathered Twigs. Putting a little bit on my work surface here on my glass mat, just using my finger, pushing that color into the cracked areas. This is about the best way that you can get that darker color in between those cracks, and it also, you can wipe off the top so that you can add another color. And then I decided to add in a little bit of evergreen bow just to bring back some of that blue that I might have covered up with the paste. And then I decided to bring back my acetate. I really enjoyed this process and just pushing that ink right in. And I'm kind of dragging it around as I go. So I'm dragging the acetate into the ink that's on my work surface and adding a little bit more color as I need it. And I'll drag that in and then I can really maneuver the color around which is really interesting to me to be able to see it right under that acetate. So I'm just adding in more color, just layers and layers, until I'm happy with my backgrounds. Here's how it's looking up close. I have a couple really fun puddles where those colors mix together and they create new colors. But I wasn't done quite yet, so I'm just going to go back in and add my evergreen bow. This happens to be my really favorite color, especially with some browns and those browns that are more orange. Okay, so this time I'm really done with adding the color for now on my backgrounds. And I've torn some strips of a book, and I'm just adding some collage medium to the back. I don't really want to do any collage medium or any type of medium over top because that is reactive. All those inks that I used will react if I were to try to do a medium over top. So I'm just tacking those down with the collage medium. And also at this point, I am pretty happy with what I have for my backgrounds and I've decided that it's time to trim these up. So I'm just trimming them just slightly under four and a quarter by five and a half because I'll be putting them onto a regular A2 card. Another technique that's really fun is I just have some embroidery thread or heavy crochet thread and I'm just coloring these with some distress sprays. So I've added a little bit of water and some evergreen bow and I'm just going to mix that in really well until I can see pretty much solid color all over the threads. And then once I do that, I can grab my heat tool and just heat that up until it's dry. I've cleaned out my jar and put some more thread in there. And this time I'm using vintage photo spray and I'm just adding one quick spray. This is a really concentrated color. Again, I have some water in there and I'll dab this a little bit drier in that one area just to pull some of that water out. And once it's fully covered, then I'll, again, I'll use my heat tool and dry that until it's completely dry. And next I'm using some Tim Holtz Ideology. This is the Urban Collection Ephemera. I've put one on each card and I've used my sewing machine to sew around. And I'm also using the chipboard frames or the baseboard frames. 
and these are really fantastic super thick and I'm using that crackle paste randomly going around I want to make sure I get some really heavy areas and thin areas and I'm not really paying attention I just don't want any sharp lines so just add that to the frame once that dries it starts to look pretty I'm starting to pull out all my elements to add to this but for the next step I'm going to be using evergreen bow paint and a little bit of water and that's going to push the evergreen bow into that paste this is completely dry and it's already cracked so it's starting to look good already but once I have that done and dry I'm going to add a little bit of ground espresso and this is pretty much just on the frame part I'm going around the crackle and just a little bit onto the crackle once I have that down I'll blot it with a paper towel and make it look a little bit less intense and it starts to blend into those colors it really turned out nice and while I have all the supplies out I'm going to grab a frame from another card and I'll do the same thing with this frame Working with these four cards is really fun for me because I'm able to do so many things all at once. So another thing that I'm going to do is add some antique linen to the recessed areas of my metal pieces. So I'm going to push that in with my finger and then wipe it off with a paper towel. And this gives me a nice shabby chic look. If I miss any areas, I can go right back in with my finger and add a little bit more paint. Next, I'll be coloring some of the little flowers, the bouquet flowers, with some vintage photo spray and I just added a little bit into my cup and some water and I'm just using a paintbrush and I'll paint that in. If it's too dark add a little bit more water um, but it will lighten up as it dries. I will eventually add a little bit of evergreen bough so I have some sort of variation to the flowers. Once I had all of my elements done I ended up putting everything together onto each card and this is them as a group and I'll go through each of them individually. So there are my colored flowers and my metal pieces that have the antique linen paint. Also a chipboard doll and you can see all that crackle paste coming up from the back and I love how it just kind of starts chipping away. I've added a few stars that I had from my stash. I'm not sure that they're still available but that frame just looks so amazing with that crackle paste and also that vintage photo paint that's around it. The next card uses a couple of the girls and I also used one of the Tim Holtz gates that I painted with black soot and evergreen bow paint. I also used a chipboard quote at the bottom and you can see my stitching around those pieces. This one I think came out really sweet. It has chipboard quotes, my frame, the metal piece, and I used just the white flowers along with a chipboard doll and crackle paste through a stencil at the top. My last card features some paste with some of the new Tim Holtz uh, weathered wood glaze that I embossed in the top and then I created a triangle where I sewed around that but I left room in there to tuck in some flowers, kind of like a Mayday basket because Mayday is coming up. I love this one and then I used a Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip at the bottom that says I love you. I hope you've enjoyed this little talk through the process that I went through and some of my thoughts as I go. And I thought it was super to make four cards that I can share with other people. We all want some mail right now. I have additional pictures on our blog post. If you want to look in the description box below, you'll find the link. And I also put all the supplies down there. And as always, thanks so much for watching.